sting, of course, takes the formidable form of the 500-pound bomb, which mosquito aircraft have developed the habit of dropping on Berlin almost every night. Bomb castings are removed from their molds as soon as they cool solid. As applied here, cool is a relative term, and the casings have to lose a good deal more heat before they can be machined. First, the bomb casings are rough ground on the outside. Next, they are tested for flaws. Immersed in water, they have air pumped in at 30 pounds to the square inch. Bubbles denote minute holes in the casing. The girl inspector marks those that are no good. However small the flaws may be, they cause the explosive to be far less effective, and that wouldn't produce the sort of result Berlin is accustomed to expect from British bombs. The casing interior must be ground smooth to prevent accidents when filling. At a multiple head lay, the thread is put on the inside of the casing to hold the base. On a conveyor, the bombs pass by girls who quickly screw on the fuse caps. Finally, the finished casings are checked for measurements before being passed OK to go to their next destination, the filling factory. It's there that they get the sting that really hurts. Eventually, the completed 500-pounders find their way to RAF aerodromes, many of them to feed those incomparable all-purpose aircraft, the Mosquitoes. Well, the Mosquito flies fast and is soon back for another load, so we can't have too many 500-pound bombs. Not so long ago, there was a Mosquito service to Berlin, running as punctually as an express train in peacetime. But let's hear about that at first hand. Here's Wing Commander Reynolds. I was fortunate enough to um, lead the first formation of mosquitoes which bombed Berlin in daylight. Uh, since then, I've led a number of raids on Germany and German-occupied territory, um, the majority of which, I'm very pleased to say, were wholly successful. <coughs> Every mosquito that you produce goes straight into frontline squadrons. Every mosquito will be bombing Germany by day, by night, or intruding over enemy territory. It'll be stinging the, the Hun where it hurts most, and the number of stings we can inflict upon him is only influenced by the number of aircraft you can produce. And production, high as it is, must be pushed still higher. I shall be coming around the factory to speak to you people who make this very excellent aeroplane to uh, tell you some of my experiences. Uh, I'd like to say a word to those, not only those rather who make the aircraft, but those who make the bombs with which we do the damage. The mosquito service must be kept up and the supply of 500 pound bombs. Everyone dropped in the right place teaches Germany that war on democracies just doesn't pay. One of the first food ships into Naples after the port was captured brought a cargo of white flour, the first seen in Italy for three years. The Nazis, looting and commandeering all they could lay hands on, swept Naples bare of food. The Allies came to the rescue. Dockside onlookers who didn't mind a bit of dirt with it had their own little hobbies. Bread distributing centers were besieged. The one thing eager Italians can't do is form an orderly queue. But we have to remember that these unfortunate people were all hungry. They're just a few of the millions made desperate by the Nazi scourge. It proves the plight of these people that they waited hours for a ration of only half a loaf for two days. 
that's all that the first cargo would run to. Amgot has much improved the position since these delayed pictures were taken. Allied occupation means the quick ending of such painful scenes as these. Joseph Linlithgow returned from India after serving as Viceroy for the exceptional period of seven and a half years. Lady Doreen Hope and Lady Joan Hope, his two daughters, together with their mother, accompanied Lord Linlithgow on the air voyage home. Mr. Amory was on the platform. Granddaughter Lady Sarah Hope, age three, also made the air voyage. After India, there's nothing in holding the baby. Travelling by air, Admiral Lord Louis Mountbatten arrived at Delhi. Air Marshal Pierce and General Auchinleck met him. Admiral Mountbatten has taken up the command in Southeast Asia with the reconquest of Burma as objective number one. China welcomes the appointment. Affairs in this theatre of war should take a turn for the better under the dashing direction of Lord Louis Mountbatten. Another traveller was Mr. Eden, here shown with General Maitland Wilson on arriving at Cairo en route to Moscow. Films from Cairo are slow travellers and great events have taken place since these pictures were taken. Messrs. Eden, Molotov and Hull have consolidated the diplomatic front at Moscow, a big step forward to Nazi defeat. The Egyptian Premier, Nahas Pasha, appeared to be quite pleased with information received. Leaving a grim trail of fire and desolation, the Nazis have fled to the Dnieper and beyond. The Russian non-stop offensive inflicts on Germany the greatest military defeat ever known. Cutting off the Crimea, the Red Army took 6,000 prisoners in two days, and that was before the Nazis surrendered the peninsula itself. The armor of entire panzer divisions was destroyed or captured. These pictures, just arrived in Britain, select incidents typical of thousands. stores of German material, some of it made in France, seem like grim tombstones on the grave of the Wehrmacht. To the accompaniment of Russian triumphs in the field, the Moscow Conference laid plans to shorten the war and build an enduring peace.